typified system of thought that has any use whatsoever uh, includes this idea of the complete whole, the origin, the source, uh, the absolute. Every system of thought has a set of assumptions or axioms which are unquestioned or unquestionable. Because as soon as you question those assumptions, the whole thing unravels. Well, so in any bona fide system of thought, there is this assumption that the complete whole is the sum total of everything that exists, past, present, and future. See? So right away, uh, you have this concept and this is the actual meaning of God. Uh, God cannot have any real uh, or practical meaning unless we uh, accept that God is the complete whole. Everything. Everything that be. And everything that exists in past, present, and future is within God. God is the complete whole. Huh? or the universe, or whatever you want to call it, and that everything else that exists, exists within God. So God has his universal form, but he also has a spiritual form, which is beyond this universe, transcendent. Huh? And that's Krishna. So your, your friend is not sufficiently intelligent to understand this. Then there, there's no way you can talk yourself blue in the face trying to explain it and it just you won't get anywhere you have to know when to give up on people there are certain people who will never ever understand who will never accept it doesn't matter how nicely you express it even Srila Prabhupada couldn't convince his own wife to become a pure devotee and give up all her nonsense you know so there's certain people who are simply cursed Prabhupada said they're cursed by Yamaraj. Huh? Yeah, uh-oh, is <laughs> right. <laughs> that they cannot understand Krishna. They cannot chant the holy name. Huh? He used to say, he used to say, chant, chant, chant. Can't, can't, can't. <laughs> that these people just they have a causeless unwillingness to serve Krishna. There's no reason for it. Just like you can explain devotional service to this person, and then and they won't be able to articulate why they can't understand it. Huh? You can say, okay, well then just chant. And they'll they won't be able to explain why, but they can't. They can't. They're incapable. They just can't. The word doesn't come out. So this means they have been cursed by Yamaraj. Uh, that they can't chant the holy name. They can't do devotional service. And when this happens, you know, the best thing is just to say, okay, I understand, and go on with your life, because you are never going to get through to that person. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes when preaching to a person like that, someone else is listening. And then we call this preaching theater. You know this person is never going to accept devotional service or Vedas or Krishna or chanting. But still you preach to them because someone else listening is benefiting from it. Uh, we call this preaching theater. You're not preaching to the person that you're talking to, apparently. You're preaching to this other person who's simply overhearing it. Uh, sometimes that's useful. But most of the time... You know, it's a waste of time preaching to people like that. Go find people who are, can respond to it. That's, that's been my whole struggle. That's why we tried this and we tried that and we tried so many things and then we finally settled on video and YouTube and the internet. Because we tried giving courses, we tried traveling around, going to gatherings, going to communities, so-called spiritual communities. Well, these people aren't, you know, any more spiritual than the, the neighbor's dog, you know, maybe even less, some of them, you know. But, uh, yeah, at least they take prasada. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, we, I tried so many different things, so many different approaches, you know, so many ways of preaching. And the thing that worked, finally, was putting, on, putting videos on the YouTube and then taking people one at a time, brand new, no background in devotional service whatsoever, and training them from the very beginning to understand everything in the proper way. Uh, you notice, you look at our, at our, uh, our membership, you don't see any ISKCON devotees, you don't see any Gaudiya Mach devotees, you don't see any Narayan Maharaj devotees, you don't see any Vrinda devotees, you don't see any devotees with any kind of background in other organizations at all. Even, not even disgruntled ex-ISKCON devotees. Well, maybe one or two of those. But generally speaking, you don't see, you, you only see people who started out with us and whole, their whole devotional life has been with our association. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. The reason is that these devotees who have experience in other organizations misunderstand the Shastra. They have been trained up in a certain way in an institutionalized misunderstanding of devotional service. And when they hear us talking about devotional service like as it is, huh? I mean we have this really radical idea like you should follow your guru's instructions. I know, it's just crazy, but, you know, uh, we read it in this book called Bhagavad Gita, something like that. Yeah, Bhagavad Gita? Anyway, we read it in this book, and it sounded really like, like you know, hey, let's try this. Yeah, but seriously, we see that other devotional groups uh, do exactly what we we're talking about earlier this evening, text two, working independently or whimsically. If you don't follow exactly the instructions of your spiritual master, you will not attain Krishna Prema. So the Western devotees, they all thought they knew better than Srila Prabhupada, and they, they didn't follow his instructions, and they, they did some other management scheme, and they did some other kind of preaching, and now the whole thing is a failure. That's why we're preaching. Huh? Because after sitting and watching that for 20 or 25 years, we couldn't stand it anymore. And we said, okay, we're going to have to do this ourselves. Huh? So this is a do-it-yourself project. You want to have a nice devotional community? Do it yourself. You want to have devotees? learning to chant and becoming ecstatic and preaching very nicely all over the world, that's fine, great, do it yourself. Uh, you are not going to get any help from any of these organizations. You're not even going to get their disgruntled, cast off, rejected followers. Huh? Because all of those people have been contaminated with the idea that we know better than Srila Prabhupada and that we have some other system and we follow that system. No, that's not going to work, and it hasn't worked, and it's not working, and it will never work. Uh, well, that's why you don't see those people here. That's why they're not taking shelter with us. That's why they're not trying to cooperate with us. Oh, yeah, there's one or two other groups of devotees who kind of see th things the same way, and we have a little bit of cooperation going on. But it's very distant, you know. I mean... You know, I don't like this situation. I don't agree with this situation. I don't think it's right. I think we all should be working together. Huh? But my, my god brothers are so quarrelsome and so difficult and so hard to work with and so hard to get along with that I haven't been able to do anything like that without endangering our spiritual health. You know? And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take good care of my d disciples. You know? They're never going to find themselves in a situation where... Um, you know, they're rejected or where they're, you know, pushed out because of politics. We don't do politics. You know, so, uh, I don't know, I got on this rant. But, 
uh, oh, because Varun was asking. Yeah, our, our preaching is a little bit different because, you know, we have adapted certain parts of Srila Prabhupada's teaching to preaching on the internet. And, you know, it's a different environment. It's a different time. It's 30 years later, 40 years later. Um, so conditions in society have changed. So we had to adapt a few things. But then there's the things that you can't adapt. And those are, you know, the direct instructions like uh, the form of the society and stuff like that. So anyway, you have to use your intelligence. Preaching is very, very difficult. Uh, you have to be very uh, persistent, very steady. And over time, you'll attain results. Question from